Hello everybody. As I have just answered the question about how to upgrade Windows 10 to the November version, I just want to show you my environment and how I tested that. So basically, I created a new script in my DSM software factory. And if you take a look into that E script, we will see that this is actually no rocket science in here. So let's start with the installation sequence down here. So we set our return code to a dedicated value. Let's skip the next command first. And the main thing basically is execute the setup with the, the parameters auto upgrade in case of an error. We will have the, the error code in our return code and we wait a maximum time of 120 minutes. So this is way too long in my opinion. So I could actually reduce it to 60 minutes or less. And just need to make sure that the setup will be finished after an hour or 40 minutes or whatever you want to select. So this is my, my uh, setup. And after executing the setup, I check for the return code and I will write uh, text into the last comment field of the policy instance. Policy instance will go to failed, so to red status. And that's basically my script. That works pretty well as long as the script fails or the setup fails. So for example, you have a timeout because the setup stalls or you really have an error because you won't find the sources, for example, or other things. As long as the setup is successful, this script will not finish. So the setup will start and then the setup routine itself will perform several reboots of the computer and will not come back to the same point in the script because we actually updated the operating system. So that's the reason why I added a check for a special registry value. And if that registry value is set to one, then I will just exit the script with the parameter done, which means the policy instance goes to compliance to a green state and I write the command update done. If or only if that registry key will not exist or is not set to one, the script continues and then we will just modify that registry key and set this registry key to the value one. So that's basically how that works. So in the very first run of that script, we will uh, modify this registry value. And the second time the script runs, it will just check for that value and then we'll exit and we'll modify or we'll just yeah modify the policy instance and set this to a compliance status. So what I'm going to do now is just to assign that package to my Windows 10 machine. So just create a new policy find my computer as a target and then confirm that as a standard policy and that will create my policy instance. Policy instance will be pending here. So this is as expected. The warning that has been shown there was just uh, because I will not provide any uninstallation routine to that script. And there was a warning that said you are actually assigning a script that will not provide uninstallation. So that's okay in this case. Let's hop over to our Windows 10 machine. What I'm going to do is just run the command niinst32 slash ai. So the DSM installer in the auto installer mode. Auto installer is running in the user context, executing all commands, machine related and user related commands. So let's launch this and we'll see what will happen. So auto installer launches, checks for new software installations and will find of course my Windows 10 update package. And then we'll start downloading the files, which takes a while because it's the entire Windows 10 DVD. So it's about three gig that we need to transfer into the machine. I mean, actually we could, depending on our environment, we could leave the sources on the server in the depot and then 
uh, load the, the sources directly from Depot or from another available network share. So that's possible as well. But in my case, I just added everything to the script. And so we need for the download to be finished and then the setup actually will start. We'll uh, reinstall the entire machine and at the end we'll reboot the machine two or three times and we'll have the November update on that machine, keeping all our data and settings and everything. What you can see here is one of the disadvantages of uh, just executing the setup. So this is the status that we can get. So it just tells us running external program uh, in the service context in this case, because I have uh, marked it as a user related command being executed in a service context. Um, the other thing is that now this progress bar will just stay here and sit here for a while. And just in case there's an error or a stall in the setup executable, this sits here for my maximum waiting time. So 60 minutes in my case, or 120 minutes as I have said that before. And so that basically could end up in showing this dialogue for about two hours and then just uh, ending or exiting the script with uh, the information that it ran into timeout. So this is the, the major disadvantage on just using the execute with setup executable. And I will just continue and uh, use a little bit fast forward and then we see uh, what happens during the setup and how it works and how long it takes. After the installation has taken place, we can log on again. And already here you can see that the same user is on the log on screen. So we haven't performed a reinstall of the machine. We just have performed the update. So machine is still DSM managed. We will see everything as before. We get the message that the PC has been updated. If we go back to the DSM console, exactly as I have mentioned in the discussion on the HEAT community, the policy instance now went to a green status. Everything's fine. And even if we launch the installer manually, after a short period of waiting, we will not see the package reinstall. The only disadvantage at this point is that we now have the original Windows 10 package. So that, that was the Windows 10 English July version and now we have the update. So what I'd recommend in this case is actually to replace these two packages or these two policy instances with a freshly packaged Windows 10 November version and replace these two policy instances on the clients with the new one. So in case of a reinstall, you will have only one OS installation pending. And again, thanks for watching. And if you want to see more, visit us on www.solmera.de.